What's going on YouTube and welcome to Intaku Nation, my home, your home, for all things gaming and all things card fight Vanguard Zero. Today guys, we're going to take a look at an off-beaten deck. We're going to take a look at something that's not meta related. We're going to take a look at OTT, Solus. Now, before we begin guys, please hit that like button if you like this video, smash that subscribe button and click the bell so that you can be notified each and every time that I upload a brand new video. With all that being said, guys, let's dive right into it. Alright, guys, welcome back to another set for deck profile video. In this segment, guys, we are going to go over Solus OTT. Um, I did want to touch on this because it is actually one of my old time favorite Oracle Think Tank decks aside from Sukuyomi. Um, this gave OTT in this set a different deck play style, completely opposite of. Sukuyomi, where you actually do want a soul, whereas in Solus OTT, aka Coco, you don't want a soul, and this deck delivers on that. Um, the argument would come in, you know, which one's more consistent in Teiku? Would you say that Sukuyomi is more consistent? Would you say OTT is more consistent? Or, you know, which one is better? And honestly, I'm a little on the fence about that. Uh, Sukuyomi is so good, so good. Um, but in my own experience, you know, Sukuyomi is one of those decks that's very finicky. And when the ride chain doesn't go off, and I've said this in my video because I played Devil's Advocate, that it feels bad. Because when you don't get the ride chain off, all of a sudden, Sukuyomi's entire deck just becomes flat vanilla. But now, on that note, same thing can unfortunately be said about Coco. Okay, let's look at Coco. Let's go look at this deck real quick. Let's look at the starter, okay? Little Witch Lulu. So, when your grade 3 or greater vanguard is placed, call this card to the rear guard. When placed, you may soul blast 2 to draw a card. Okay, so automatically, you know, you're you're fetching a card and that always feels good, right? Okay, now let's look at the synergy with Scarlet Witch, Coco, the grade 3. Vanguard, during your turn, if your soul has no cards, this unit gets plus 3,000. Okay, so she hits those magical cross ride numbers, which makes her relevant for OTT. It was like... Bushy Road in the beginning was like, okay, well, we got to let OTT still be able to be relevant and be able to hit certain numbers. So they immediately gave Coco just a built in inherent ability that she can gain 3,000 as long as you don't have a soul. And as long as she's the one that you actually ride first on your grade three turn, that's not a hard condition to meet. It automatically happens because when placed, if your soul has one or less cards, you may CB2, counter blast two, to draw two cards. So on ride, you counter blast two, you soul blast one. Or soul blast two and you remove the starter from the soul put it on the rear guard all these different things are happening all of a sudden you're sitting with three extra cards in your hand and that feels nice you know it's an inherent draw engine in and of itself so now let's look at something else okay if we look at one of the other witches in the grade one lineup so rear guard win place if you have no soul you may discard a card from your hand if you do draw a card so this allows you to like ditch a coco like if you're fetching for those toms or you're looking for your pg Lala gives you that ability to search and dig through your deck, which if we, if you kind of look at some of the decks uh, like Dote and you look at Shadows, um, they have ways to dig through the deck. Now, if you look at MLB though, MLB doesn't really dig through the deck so much as they tutor out the pieces that they need. They search for the pieces that they need through Gansla, the Wingle Brave, Starcall Trumpeters, um, all of the such, you know, it allows you to kind of search. So it's not so much digging as search. So... OTT is just no different than Dote or um, uh, even Perfect Razor because with Perfect Razor, you're kind of digging through the deck with your Magician Girls and your draw triggers to try to get your pieces. And um, yeah, Soulless OTT is just no different. Like you, you just got ways to kind of filter through, dig through the deck and get what you need. Um, there's not much difference here, guys. We do run, you know, obviously for four PGs for our grade one lineup. We are running two Coco. You could go up on Coco, maybe three. I don't know if you really want to run four because she has a 6k um it is nice to be able to still see the top card of the deck side you know hey do i want to keep this do i want to put it back because if it's a trigger then it feels nice if it's not it allows you to kind of know like what you're going to draw into versus also what you're going to drive check into and coco is just all around you know really nice gives you that little fortune telling ability um we do run three of the 8k vanillas because magic christmas numbers that i like to call them uh 8k vanilla just help you to meet that threshold because like if you got let's see 8k plant behind um battle sister glace during your turn if your soul has no card she becomes a 12k so now you've got that behind, with a gemini behind him and all of a sudden she's swinging for 20,000. hits the trigger 25 again you're hitting those magic 
magic numbers, guys. And that's what it's all about right now in this format. You want your, your rear guard columns to be hitting those magic Christmas numbers so that you can actually land the hits that you want to hit. Um, we are running um, in the grade 2 lineup the force line Toms because Tom, Tom's not going anywhere. Even in limit break, you're still going to run Tom. Even when we go into the arc mode of the CEO archetype support where we get the cross ride limit break version of CEO Amaterasu and she gets her CEO support with the Susanos and all that stuff, you're still going to run Tom because Tom is the OTT finisher. And until something better comes along, I don't think that it will. Tom's just going to be where it's at. He's going to be, he's like faces the place. You know, I don't care if you have a PG, I'm coming for your face if you're grade five or a damage five, grade five. That's terrible. My English, it, um, it fails me. Anyway, guys, so looking at the grade two lineup again, we do have the, the Gemini's, uh, or the Oracle guardian wise man. And that's just pretty solid because it's 10 K. Um, I just don't know what else you'd want to put in this lineup guys. Uh, you could go up more on the rock, Witch Gaga. Um, which is Vanguard Rearguard when this unit attacks if your soul has no cards again no soul um, you may draw a card and put a card from here on the bottom of your deck now she does kind of give you that Sukuyomi feel because she's like okay I'm going to take this trigger I'm going to draw a card but I'm going to put this trigger back on the bottom of the deck so it does kind of give you a little you know trigger stacking ability but it, it just feels a little underwhelming in this deck because I don't think more times than not the deck is not going to go that far the distance that it's gonna matter and at that point you're just putting something back and hoping at some point if it's there that you hit it but on the off chance that you don't then it's just kind of eh. but she still she still lets you get through the deck and you know lets you kind of search for your silent toms or your perfect guards and that always feels nice so yeah there's not a whole lot to say about that package so far of this deck but now let's look into the grade threes now and my preference yeah you don't want to go CEO in this deck because she's gonna soul charge that immediately goes against everything that this deck wants to do um on the off chance though that you don't get coco here's the falcon apollon apollon is your falcon so when this unit attack hits you may cb2 to draw two cards so again you can still get rid of the starter to soul blast two and draw a card so then when this guy swings Obviously, more times than not, he's going to hit, you know, especially if it's your first ride and you got two CB, you're going to net two more cards, okay? On top of that, you know, you can return a card from your hand to the deck, so you can put a trigger bag if you wanted to. Um, this just feels nice. It's like Coco 1.5. I don't want to say 2.0 because he's just not as good as Coco in the, in the deck built around Coco. But I'm a huge fan of Avalon. I've been a huge fan of Avalon since the game first came out because the on-hit abilities actually work in this game. And he nets you two cards and lets you put one back. So it's like you got a heal, and you're like, I want to put this heal back. And then if somehow you shuffle the deck, then you're doing good things. You're doing good things. You're setting yourself up for better chances of healing out of some damage and maybe coming back from the clutches of the defeat. They take you all the way to five and then swing for final, you know, final turn. Um, let's look at a little tech in here. I did do Meteor Break Wizard because on Vanguard Rearguard, when this unit attacks, you may CV1 to get plus 3k. Again, you line him up with a, a Gemini and you're swinging for 21 magic numbers, guys, because if they're not cross ridden, they're going to be 11 Ks. And in worst case scenarios, they're 10 Ks. So if they hit a trigger, they're going to be 20, 21 or worst case scenario, they are cross ridden. They hit 23. So this guy just helps you to meet those demands. He's a tech in. Now, why is he a tech in? Because the technical backup to Coco which the, they gave us in this set is supposed to be Skywish Nana. Uh, Nana says on the Vanguard or Rearguard during your turn, if you if your soul has no cards, so again, you're soulless, um, she gets plus 3k. She's basically Palamides, she's basically dual lag, she's basically any other grade 3 that becomes a 13k attacker. Um, and again, magic numbers, guys, magic numbers. If you have the Gemini behind her and the deck has gone off, that's 21k that's 26k on the off chance that you gave it a power buff from a trigger okay um that is the beauty of this deck is that this deck can hit magic numbers i mean if you look at it, you're like well you know it doesn't retire it doesn't restand it doesn't give me a crit it um it doesn't do these magical beautiful wombo combos that um shadows dote mlb are all doing but it is a good deck 
It is a good deck. Is it tier one? No, it's not going to be. It's just not going to be. Because the other decks have answers in order to shut some of the stuff down. But if you're a budget player, if you're a budget player and you're looking for an OTT deck or you're looking for a deck that's just really strong and it's fairly, you know, very consistent for the most part, this is the deck for you. This is the deck that was made for you. Because you don't have to run the Cocos, okay? If you're looking from a budget-friendly perspective, like, you know, oh, and take you on, you know, I'm free to play, man. I don't really want to, you know, invest too much. Then screw this. Screw the Coco. Don't even worry about that, okay? Just put in another Gemini. Put in something else. I mean, you know what? You could even put in, I think, a Sword Dance Angel that allows you, like, every time you draw a card, it gets a power buff. Hell, throw that in there. Because then, all of a sudden, you got something that's just gaining power, and then that hits even more, you know, threshold. So yeah do that if you like to um but the only problem is in this deck yes you have to have the, th the four coco like you have to have four so she's the only hard investment that you need for this deck because honestly truth be told no you do not need silent tom um is he awesome is he amazing it does he finish games yes on all counts yes but you can still play this deck without the toms so the only thing I'm saying that is a must in this entire package is the PGs and the Cocos. And it seems like for the most part, Coco is not really a hard card to pull. Um, unfortunately, I did have to craft, I think, two of them because I did not pull her. And I and I mean, I know you say, well, dude, you just said that uh, she's not a hard card to pull. Yeah, I mean, but from the consensus of everybody out there on Twitter, Facebook, um, Instagram, YouTube, whatever, Discord's. Coco is just not that hard to get. Um, and it's just an easy deck to build because for the most part, it's just full of double rares. Like you got what? Four, eight, 12 double rares. And then you only need the the, the one triple rare. You need well, four, the four copies of the triple rare Coco. Okay. Um, again, I do say this is kind of budget friendly because it's not a high demand. This is not a high demand of uh, what? MLB or um, Shadows. Shadows has got way, way more. Like that is the uh, that is the wallet deck of this format. But anyway, guys, again, we're just looking at this. I'm kind of curious, guys. Please drop your comments down below. Let me know what you think about Solus OTT versus Sukuyomi. Um, I think the consensus is um, amongst most Vanguard players is that they feel that Sukuyomi is the better deck versus the Solus deck. Um, I'm just a huge fan of Solus. Don't get me wrong, Sukuyomi's amazing. I do love the deck. It just hates me in this game because the ride chain always seems to want to go wonky. And then I'm sitting in vanilla and then I just get irritated because I'm just sitting on a vanilla deck that's not doing anything and I'm just dying because my deck just can't do what it was built to do. That being said, I think Solus is pretty strong. I think the conditions met for Solus are minuscule compared to Tsukuyomi where you want to get the right chain um, and you want to make sure you have the soul that's just my opinion that's just my opinion maybe I'm being biased but anyway guys yeah definitely check this deck out guys I know it's just underwhelming it's not really hitting the meta it didn't hit the meta in Japan but if you're not a meta player if you're not chasing the dragon check out solo so TT guys I do want to uh, touch on one thing I did try to go nine crit for heal i did find that there was still a little bit of inconsistencies trying to draw into my pieces and getting what i needed my suggestion for this deck because it does have a natural draw engine in itself is to go five draw four crit that way you kind of keep up with the meta okay it kind of keeps it toe-to-toe -to -toe with your mlbs and your shadows and your perfect razors because at least that at that point you have the chance to actually crit them you have the chance to actually take them even further in damage if you can drive check into the critical trigger and so um i think that's amazing that's one of the cool things about ott and i said this last night on stream with um card fight vision and juan mango 64 is that ott is in a really cool place versus the meta because most of these meta decks you have to run all draw there's no room to you know use critical triggers in those decks yes you can you can but you sacrifice getting your key pieces, you sacrifice being able to replenish your fields, you sacrifice getting those PGs if you need them, because then you're kind of living and dying by PGs. It's like, okay, either I'm going to kill them and they don't have PGs, or either they're going to kill me because I didn't have PGs, or I can kind of live because I did get PGs, and then it's just all of a sudden, like, PGs are just the most relevant thing and the most important thing 
Um, and unfortunately, perfect guards are very strong in zero. You need them. Like, you want to see them. If you don't see them, it feels bad. Um, but again, going back to my point, is that um, OTT is just really cool. Because, like, in some hardcore Sukuyomi builds, you can go straight up just crits because of the inherent draw that the deck has. Like, it digs, filters, it stacks triggers, and it allows you to be able to run crits. And that feels good because it's just nice to not have to raw, I can't even talk, to run all draw triggers and zero. Because zero is made draw triggers just the nuts. It is the most important trigger in the game. Whereas in the original game, crits were the place because we kept our drive checks you know we were able to still draw in the stuff and um that felt nice so we could we could afford to run critical triggers not so much in zero um again guys not a whole lot to say about this deck i did just want to touch on it i felt it necessary to at least represent ott this time um in this meta in this format in this season because we all know right now the three kings three kings shadow mlb and um dote and it's just unfortunate it's really unfortunate that kind of like ott in every other deck in the game is kind of like been put on the back burner because those three clans are so strong they're so effective and consistent in what they do that the other clans right now just kind of feel like they pale in comparison and don't don't take that as i'm saying that the other decks can't compete okay don't don't take that as that way because they can. I'm going to be honest with you. And I'll just openly admit this. I was playing MLB myself. I was playing the deck. And I was placing a van, uh, playing against a Grand Blue player. And that particular player decided they wanted to run crits in Grand Blue. And I got put into a position that didn't feel too good. I didn't have a PG in hand. And they drive checked a crit. Which I didn't know they were even running crits in the deck. It just happened. All of a sudden, whoop, there's a crit. And I'm like, really? That's kind of a thing. Whereas I may not have lost that match. But because they're trying to go toe to toe with the meta, they're trying to stay relevant in a format that can can naturally inherit a crit into their card. You know, that's people trying to adapt to the meta. That's trying to adapt. Like you know, I don't want to play meta. I want to play my clan, and so I'm going to put crits in it. Um, and it does work out. Don't get me wrong. It does work out. It just hurts the consistency of the deck. It hurts what you can do, unfortunately, because you don't, again, you just don't keep drive checks, guys. But again, I'm kind of, you know, beating off the trail of OTT, but I just want to touch on this, guys. Please, you know, feel free to build this deck. Please feel free to kind of modify it to your liking. You know, again, you know, Santeku's motto, do not cookie cutter my decks. Do not cookie cutter what I do. Do you have fun, experiment, and see what works for you guys. Please, please have fun. That is the importance of this game. The importance of any of these decks is to have fun in this game. It is not all about the meta. It is not all about just being the end all be all best at this game. It's always important to remember to have fun and play what you love. Play the clans that you love and defy the meta. Go against the grain. Be the underdog deck that comes out on top. With all that being said, guys, please remember hit that like button guys if you do like this video please hit the subscribe button it helps me help you guys like i cannot stress that enough we are almost to 150 subs that feels amazing and i thank all of you who keep coming back i thank all of you for the love and support that you've given my channel but please guys if you do view this and you've gotten this far into my video please hit that subscribe button so that i can help keep growing with you guys and we can keep making amazing content together and grow this community as a whole and as always Please guys, stay strong, stay healthy, and stand up my vanguard.